So the Silent Hill 2 remake has received a new story trailer, as well as nearly 30 minutes of new gameplay footage. IGN also has a hands-on impression of the first 3 hours of the game. Let's take a look at what new information we can learn about the game based on these. Earlier I made a first impression video based on the previously released gameplay and information. You can check that out in the top right corner of the screen if you are interested. At that time, I wasn't aware that some players labeled the game as woke, especially because of the character designs. I generally don't like getting involved in YouTube drama because I find it pointless to spin conspiracy theories about a video game simply. And if someone is indeed trying to influence people through a video game, there is only really one thing you can do. Just vote with your wallet and don't buy the game. Making 10 drama videos which are often exaggerated doesn't really change a thing. However, knowing this and that Maria become a focal point for players in this regard, particularly due to her appearance and characteristics, I did notice that in the gameplay she seems like a very innocent girl, but in the trailer she looks like a completely different person. Her posture and characteristics have changed even though the 3D model is the same. By the way, I know this happens after a certain event in the game, but probably Blooper team just wanted to emphasize on this contrast further by making her initially very innocent. What I'm trying to say is that she now strongly resembles the original Maria. She's much more confident and feminine, because that was one of the complaints by players that she wasn't feminine enough. Although people can still whine that her skirt isn't short enough compared to the original game. The trailer, by the way, is almost identical to the original Silent Hill 2 trailer. We get to see Eddie for the first time, who looks so cool and creepy that I can't even imagine what fans could be complaining about regarding him. By the way, I don't know why they didn't choose this trailer for the initial reveal. Maybe the game wasn't in such an advanced state at the time, which would make sense. But the first trailer focused heavily on graphics and gameplay which aren't usually the most important aspects of Silent Hill games. The selling point for the fans are atmosphere and story when it comes to Silent Hill. This story trailer would have won more people over initially in my opinion. Well, yet again, this is not a uncut gameplay footage. Instead, it shows highlights from the various parts of the game, similar to the previous gameplay trailer basically. This one also focuses on the atmosphere, gameplay and combat. Regarding the combat system, I'm still convinced that it's a significant improvement compared to the previous Silent Hill games. Of course, compared to the other modern games, its quality might be more debatable and it could be critiqued, but compared to the original Silent Hill 2 combat system, which practically did not exist, it's miles ahead of it. While the third-person camera angle provides a familiar perspective, as hundreds of games have been made this way since Resident Evil 4, and thus the Silent Hill 2 remake is less cinematic without the fixed camera or dynamically fixed camera angles, however this actually works to the combat system's advantage. Although it still seems a bit clunky in the sense that James isn't a special forces soldier, so he isn't that fast. Yet it's easier to aim and use the dodge function as well compared to fighting in fixed camera view. In other words, combat now feels like a separate minigame within the game itself rather than a struggle. There is no information yet on how much ammo will be available, but limited resources in survival horror greatly enhance the tension. Hopefully Blooper Team stays true to the original game in this regard. Even if the combat system has improved and now you can go head to head against monsters, it would be more impactful if you couldn't always do that. Or if you had to make a decision about when to conserve resources. I haven't seen any info on this yet, but it would also increase the tension if melee weapons broke after extensive use. This would make players think twice before going and smashing every monster in front of them. We just hope that the combat system is this complex because in one scene, you can see that shooting a nurse in the leg can bring her to her knees and temporarily stop her. So we can hope for the rest as well. We see also more outdoor scenes in this gameplay, with more stores and locations to enter. I like that resources and key items are placed in locations where they logically should be, like in a car trunk or a drawer, rather than just always lying around on the ground or in a counter. But unfortunately these are marked with that usual little white circle on the screen. And it's not an issue for me because this is the modern gaming standard, but it feels better to discover and find key items or anything that advances the game's progression on my own. It would be very nice to have an option to turn this off in the settings. In the outdoor scene, Silent Hill is incredibly atmospheric, shrouded in fog, with monster sounds occasionally echoing from the distance. 
The music, by the way, is identical to the original and it doesn't play all the time. You often hear only the oppressive silence, James' footsteps only, and with some creepy noise from the end of a dark hallway. Returning to the combat system, the boss fights in Silent Hill games were never overly complex. With a few exceptions, you just had to pump the enemy full of ammo and it would go down. In this gameplay, we see a snippet of one of the Pyramid Head boss fights. This fight feels less tactical and exciting compared to any we've seen against the regular monster so far. Basically, you just have to beat and shoot the poor thing and press the dodge button when it attacks. But again, compared to the original game, this boss fight also still a huge step forward. IGN's 3 hour gameplay impression largely aligns with how I feel based on what I've seen so far of the game. They also highlighted that since key items and resources are often found in drawers or cabinets, finding them is a focal point now, so the game could end up feeling a bit like looting all the time. But I think everyone used to this by now if they played modern horror games. Step 1. Secure the area. Step 2. Loot the area. They also noted, and not necessarily as a negative point, that compared to the Resident Evil remakes, Silent Hill 2 Remake doesn't take as much creative liberty in altering the story and instead opts to follow the safe route by closely replicating the original game story step by step. I just can't see this as a negative in any way. A remake should be like this, because many so-called remakes that turn out to be reimaginations rather, they already disappointed us. Of course, we'll see how it turns out once we actually get to play it, but for now, Silent Hill 2 Remake looks like one of the games of the year. I was Gabe, and I catch you in the next one. Until then, keep gaming.